Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 16. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 16. I once again flying over Australia. I was getting more fascinated with that country each day. Both its urban as well as its natural beauty of an indescribable magnitude and exuberance that amazed me. The eight of us got on the plane at the airport of Melbourne. We were heading the city of Augusta, which was located in the heart of southern Australia. That was the closest place we could get to on a regular plane. As you move deeper into Australia, the urban landscapes start disappearing as Mother Nature starts showing of its landscapes as you move from the south toward the north. We were all excited about this event and feeling very thrilled with that expedition, yet I was more excited than everybody else. That country had enchanted me beyond the natural excitement to see the phenomenon, which was why I was going on that trip to start with. Carla was sitting by my side. Like I said before, it felt as if I'd gained a daughter. She wouldn't let go of my hand. I think she was afraid of flying. And my serious and adult behavior had attracted her. Her amazing 21-year-old body hit a 13-year-old girl who had lost her parents. Sometimes I felt awkward. However, our research made the situation a bit easier to handle, at least until we return home. Everyone was comfortably sitting in their respective seats. Just by looking at their faces, I could tell they were apprehensive with the work they'd have to do once they landed. Even so, nevertheless, they all tried to look cool. Indeed, I am not sure whether that relaxed them or made them feel more nervous instead. I observed them carefully. After all, they were my team. We were going to depend on one another. Besides, I was the technical team leader. I could not let their nervousness and lack of experience harm the project or themselves, as it happened to the anthropologist. Through my window, I could still see the city of Melbourne disappear little by little. It was a regular town. Most cities seem calm when seen from above. They look like toys. Even the crazy city of New York does. Yet, this city seemed to have been drawn by an architect. It was totally regular and its most magnificent buildings could be easily spotted from afar. It is a very pretty city. Up to this day and age, I have remembered the beautiful city of Melbourne seen from above, so calm and perfect. And as we got further away, I'd noticed the dryness of the Australian inlands as part of the landscape again. Carla told me she had been born in Augusta. She said it was just as regular as Melbourne, only it was much smaller. I could hardly wait to see the transformation of a lonely inland into a modern city again. It felt as if we'd crossed two different worlds. And as we moved farther north, the dryness increased. I wondered what sort of a place Northern Territory would be like. The more I learned about it, the more fascinated I got. What do you see through that window that is so interesting, Joseph? I think Carla was feeling a little ignored for we had been flying for about 15 minutes, everybody was trying to sleep, except for she and I, and I only had eyes for the landscape, not for her. I think one ought to be from out of town in order to appreciate the simplest from a certain location, therefore. Joseph, please. I'm sorry, Carla. It's just that your country fascinates me by being so beautiful. If you find deserts beautiful. And you don't know how. But there's something else I find very pretty and she started smiling again. She acted like a child. You give her some candy and her grouchiness goes away. What do you mean? I felt like such a bastard. You? My beautiful Australian blonde. I'd never uttered such a horrible sentence before. Oh, Joseph. And then we went from there. It all got smoother from that point on. At least, only her personality was immature. Her professional efficiency made up for that, I think. We finally got to Augusta. It was exactly as Carla described, regular, but smaller than Melbourne, a lot smaller. The airplane started landing. Carla held my hand very tight. I gave one last glance at John who was sitting in the next aisle. He bent his head as a sign that everything was under control. The other five guys were okay. The aircraft landed. There were only two other airplanes at the airport at the time. I wondered if one of them was the one that had been rented by the university in order for us to continue on with our journey. We walked down to the lobby where somebody would be waiting to take us to it. However, there was no one waiting for us once we got there. I sat down and waited for a while. I could not help noticing Carla was bothered by having to spend longer than planned in her hometown where her parents died. Calm down, Carla. They should be here at any time and we'll leave right. 
Afterward. Don't worry, Joseph. I'm fine. It's just that certain memories come through my head and that does bother me. Don't you have any good memories of this place, only bad ones? It's not that. I was a happy child here, but the bad memories seem to always prevail, I shut up. She was right. In a more intense way, that's how I felt regarding the voices at Oles Park. The memory of so much pain and sadness made me want to avoid that place, just like Carla felt awkward by being back in Augusta all of a sudden. After her parents' death, she moved in with her aunt and uncle in Melbourne. And this is the first time she's been back there since then. I think John knew about that as well. Is everything all right, Carla? We'll be leaving soon. He looked at me and I knew just what I had to do. I hugged her. I was never sure of that, but I think John liked Carla and, in spite of his great leadership skills, his shyness paralyzed every time the situation involved him personally. He was an interesting fellow. He deserves to be mentioned herein. Twenty minutes went by till the guy in charge of the airplane the university rented out showed up in front of us. He was dressed up as a mechanic. I think he was very gentlemanly, but somewhat disturbed. Hi there. You are the folks from the school, right? John looked at me and I smiled, thinking, is school. I think the guy thought this was a middle school field trip. John? Yes, sir. Can we leave now? Sure. The airplane is almost refueled. I will take you until to the hangar. Come with me. We grabbed our stuff and followed the man until there. How I was wrong about the aircraft. And there it was, Silver Doom. No name had ever had so much to do with anything before. It was silver, all right. And we were also doomed, it was a relic from World War II. And it was basically asking to retire. John had to ask that one million dollar question. Is this airplane safe, sir? Yes, of course. It never fell in thirty years of use. I wondered even how much longer his good fortune would still last. John turned to us and said, Professor Mandison said that the budget was real tight. I just didn't imagine it so tight. What do you guys think? Everybody looked at each other. I decided to open the way to the others. It looks okay to me. I don't want to backslide after having started the journey. And then, Carla said. I agree with Joseph. The other five ones, as usual, were hesitant for a few seconds and then said. We'll go. The fear of being considered cowards was greater than the fear of dying. They were stupidly noble. Despite my concern with the group's welfare, I could not help liking them as time went by. We're all set. Everybody get on board now. So we boarded the plane. There were ten passenger seats. Every place else was to carry luggage and stuff. In spite of being old, it was clean. And, although we were afraid, we were also young. Thus, we could not help seeing that as an adventure, as it happens in the movies. The airplane took off. The initial turbulence and lack of pressurization were the first signs that civilization was being left behind and, in a way, our past was too. And, as the city faded away and the desert took over the landscape, a sudden feeling of fear came over me. It was going to live through one more expectation. I think everybody felt the same. We all going to do a scientific research at an academic level, yet, to a certain degree, I started to agree with the gentleman who assisted us in Augusta, we were middle school students going on a field trip, only that that was no adults there to supervise us. We had to take care of ourselves, we had to mature. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.